Overwatch is a game that had a ton of potential as an esports title, but I think that one thing that many of us would agree with that's holding the Overwatch League back, not the one thing, but one thing, is the Overwatch League's format. Obviously, we've talked about it here plenty on the channel in the past, what with all the traveling they have to do and whatnot, and I think that many of us would also be wondering what the Overwatch League could have looked like if it did have a different format and it did have a different structure, you know, more uh, streamlined and accessible gameplay to both the viewers and the players. But today, we're gonna be looking at Monte Cristo, who was on stream with other Overwatch personalities when he mentioned a pitch he had to change the Overwatch League's format. His idea, of course, was denied by Blizzard, which uh, the reason why I, I think is a little funny, which we'll get into, but let's look at what the Overwatch League could have been. The way I couched it was that it was sort of, I it was it was more along the lines of, I guess, like tennis, where you have like, you know, the US Open and the Australia, you have the big te like tent pole tennis events where everybody kind of travels there and, and competes. You could also compare it to like a Mario Kart race, okay, where you have like the Star Cup or whatever. So my idea was that when we go into the home and away model is that we carve everything up into like a North American Cup and then you have the Asian Cup and you have the European Cup or West Coast NA, East Coast NA slash and Europe slash Asia. And what you do is you theme this cup. So we would call it like you would have four cups a year, like the Omnic Cup and the Talon Cup. OK, whatever you want to call it, theme it around Overwatch. So he compares it to tennis or Mario Kart where it's split up into different regions and each region would compete for their region's cup at the same time as other regions. So like tennis, how they have the Australian Open and the US Open and whatnot, teams from each region would travel and compete at the same time at the same place in their respective regions. So it would save a lot of traveling difficulties. But Monte Cristo goes more in depth. At you, you have a, the Omnic Cup and the Omnic Cup is being played simultaneously. So you have the West Coast Omnic Cup, East Coast Omnic Cup, and you have the Asian Omnic Cup, okay? And the teams that are in there all compete for that first stage. And like the first stage is always called the Omnic Cup. So you, you can actually say like, oh, this team is like a three-time Omnic Cup winner, right? Whatever you want to say. You can drive narratives that way is my point. It's primarily a, a, a narrative driving device for the broadcast. Now you have a winner from each of these regions and then maybe you have an like an international tournament that happens with the top teams from each of the cups after you resolve that. But the, the key thing is with travel. So you might say half the West Coast teams are going to go to Asia and half the Asian teams are going to go to the West Coast. So some teams are at home for the entire month and the other teams are traveling among the different homestands or whatever, right? So the teams would compete in their region for different cups, the first one being the Omnic Cup in Monte's example, and you would take the winners from those regions. So you would have the North American Omnic Cup winner and then the European Omnic Cup winner and then the Asian Pacific Omnic Cup winner, you know, however many it is, whatever it is. And then you'd have them come together and compete at an international level. And I also really like how he mentions the purpose of it being narrative driven. So you've got, you know, a story and kind of a legacy for these teams to uphold and just kind of more for fans to connect with in the first place. But there's more, and Monty explains how there'd be multiple cups and how the rankings and the standings would work. And the, also the idea was if you won a cup, you'd get circuit points that would, playoff points, let's say, that would lead to playoff seeding. And the playoff points would increase in amount as you got closer to playoffs. So it would wait the back end of the season when, because patches exist and like, you don't want a team that was good on a patch in six months before playoffs start. It's what League does. It's very like effective. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's what League does. It's very effective. League doesn't do that anymore, but it's what they did at the time. So the idea here is that you have multiple champions all at one time. So some half the teams will travel to a different region. You play your little tournament there. Each of them raises a trophy. And then maybe you have a weekend where it's like, you know, the ultimate Omnic Cup winner. And then you just move all the teams again and you do this. It limits travel. So you win a cup, you get playoff points, and then that's what determines your playoff seeding. And then those top teams compete in the playoffs at the end of the season, and then that's what determines the international champion. But Monte Cristo says that the Overwatch League thought that his idea was too complicated, and he explains why. And the reason why this was not accepted was because it was too complicated. The reason why it was too complicated was they, the presumption was that playoff points and all these individual micro tournaments, I was told, would be too complicated for fans. Again, even that though we literally have 20 years of yeah. esports history that shows that people can understand this, 
Also, um, so it's really not that hard like, to people, get, right? People, I mean, <laughs> I I agree with you. This is, you know, we we are people who understand these things. Um, but I was told that no, it's the you know the the regular season is that's that's much easier to understand, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Apparently, when they said it's too complicated, it's literally because they felt as if fans just wouldn't understand it. And I, I wouldn't say that that's 100% a bad reason because. You know, I could totally understand how people would find it confusing, but like Monty says, history shows that esports fans would probably be capable of understanding it, especially, you know, if, if me, you know, just listening to Monty actually talking about it and describing it and giving examples, if I could understand it, I imagine that others probably could too. And how do you guys feel about his idea? Are there any holes in it that you might have noticed, or do you think that it's a good format and maybe it's something that you would have liked to see the Overwatch League just adopt or just try? because it would save a ton of traveling, you know, which is of course, like I mentioned, is one of the biggest issues that people have with the Overwatch League. And on top of that, you wouldn't be buying homestand tickets to just so go see a couple games over the weekend, you know, for a couple hundred bucks. But yeah, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of downsides to it, but let me know your guys' thoughts on this and let me know maybe another format that you guys would have liked to see the Overwatch League use. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys. Oh my God. Where did my facial hair go?